poster project, I decided to research the old Detroit City Hall, which is in Detroit, Michigan. Um, so the building was designed in 1861 by James Anderson. Uh, the construction did not start until 1867, about six years later, because of the restriction on construction materials that were in place during the Civil War. Um, but once that finished, they started building, and it took about four years to finish. In 1871, they opened the building up. Uh, it cost $602,130 overall, which would be about $18 million today. And from the time that it opened up until the time it was demolished, uh, it acted as a seat of government for Detroit. There were two major players, both fighting for and against the demolition of this building, who were actually the mayors of Detroit, which I will get into later. So the public reception of the building, overall, the people, like the residents of Detroit, were happy with the building. They were fine with it. They had no qualms with it. Really, the only complaints were coming from political figures, which, again, I will talk about in a little bit. Um, they even were kind of reliant on specifically the clock tower of the building, which was one of the more elaborate parts of the building. It was actually a very ornate and extravagant uh, structure. It had a lot of detailing on the outside, as you can see in the picture. It has even the domed roof. One article describes it as Italian Renaissance revival, so it is very ornate, very reminiscent of like Greek uh, and Renaissance uh, style art. Um, it even had marble flooring, iron cast stairwells, and statues all over it. I think it was 14 statue maidens all over the building. Um, yeah, people liked it. They like they were kind of reliant on the clock tower, and they even had a tradition in New Year's Eve where once the clock the clock tower struck at midnight, the couples would go out and they would kiss during the the chiming. So the demolition the building was kind of complicated. It had two front runners for both for and against the demolition of the building, and the fights for demolition started almost immediately after it opened. Um, there was Mayor Hazen S. Pingree, who was considered to be one of the greater mayors of Detroit overall. Um, he argued that it was ugly. He was constantly fighting for its demolition, talking about how it was unnecessary, it wasn't fit to be the city hall for Detroit, and things like that. And on the opposite side, who was a major supporter for keeping the city hall, was actually another one of the greatest mayors of Detroit, who was John C. Lodge. And he fought for it throughout his career as mayor. He fought to keep it even up until like his death. And it wasn't even at until after his death that they were able to clear the building for demolition to decide to actually demolish it. And then once they actually agreed to demolish the building, it took a while to even physically tear it down because there was so many times where it was pushed back, it was postponed, they were renegotiating, uh, there were random people fighting up to try and save it, so it did take a long time to actually demolish the building, but it did seem that it would be kind of inevitable just because people were fighting for it pretty early on into its existence, essentially. But the building was eventually torn down in 1961. That is 90 years after it was finished being constructed and 100 years, a full century, after it was first designed. So what this has to do with archives and historical records, um, like I said, there was a long, complicated history for the demolition of this, but it was eventually demolished, and we are fortunate that we have a lot of photos of it left behind. Habs does have a collection of photographs of the building. There is also photographs on websites that I found in research, such as Legends of America or HistoricDetroit.org. They have a, a significant collection. Um, the Library of Congress has a collection of the photographs of this building, so there's a decent historical record left behind of this building, which is good because it allows for future generations who would never get to see this if there weren't photographs of this, and that means they probably would never even really know about it, because you can hear about things in a textbook, but being able to see it kind of makes it more real, especially when it's a photograph, rather than like just a floor plan or a blueprint, though those are obviously also really important and significant in keeping the memories of these places and their histories alive. 